Everybody ready? Good. So uh, I'll talk a little bit about the film today. The film is um, Dick and Andrew will talk about the Barbecue Bingo. Um, I know that's not enough. Is that good, Evan? Yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I'm not, I have, you know, not enough exposure to the mouth. Go ahead. Go ahead. You laugh and you laugh. Yeah. <laughs> if I don't, step in. Well, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Friend Day 2023. Great to see you guys and gals this morning in church. Man, we welcome you here to Broadway Baptist Church for this great day. So glad to be able to share it together. We have a fantastic uh, time prepared for you today. Uh, some great music, obviously great fellowship in here. Uh, the message I know is just going to be something that we all need to grasp. And ultimately then, there is fried chicken waiting in the wings. Can I get an amen for some fried chicken? Somewhere along the way, we're going to also work in baptism this morning. So it's just going to be a jam-packed friend day Sunday morning. And I am so excited that you are here with us to, uh, to worship, but also to celebrate each and every year we have Friend Day right around Resurrection Sunday just in hopes that we can continue to celebrate all that Jesus has done for us. So thanks for being a part of Friend Day 2023. If you are a friend or brought a friend this morning, guess what that gets you? You get first in line. That means you don't have to eat the chicken neck. <laughs> Only the old people really know what that means because uh, that's as... When uh, when we were younger, you know, we didn't get to eat first in line like all the kids do these days. So all that was left was the chicken neck by the time we came through the line. So uh, great to see you guys this morning. Again, we are uh, going to celebrate in here. As soon as we are finished, we are going to go to our family center, which is just right behind the uh, building here. And uh, everything is set up for you. The food will be ready. And uh, we're going to uh, feast together. And then I do want to remind you one other thing. Because we're just going to hang around fellowship as long as you like this afternoon. No church tonight, okay? So please make note, no evening service tonight, okay? Now, since we're Baptists, we do like to eat, okay? I just, I just got to say. So we're gonna, we've lined up one more time to eat for you. So if you eat enough today... You can wait all week and eat again next Saturday because there's another meal coming up for the teenagers. Yes, you know we're all going to eat way too much today so that we can fast the rest of the week and ease on into Barbecue Banquet, which is this Saturday at uh, 5 p.m. over in the Family Center. So if you have not been a part of this, this is how a Barbecue Banquet works. So all you do is show up, sit down, and we serve you. We don't do a price per plate. What we do is it's all by donation basis. It's all a love offering. And it's our, this is our first big fundraiser for youth camp, and it's been very successful the past few years, and so we'd just like to continue it because it's a, it's a free date night for you. You don't have to plan it or anything. Just show up and, and have a good time and be served by some teenagers. If they, uh, if they don't get your tea refilled on time, let me know, and we'll whip them into shape. Cause we, but a lot, of the, a lot of these teenagers, they've never worked a job. And so we get to kind of show them how to take care of a take care of a a a, a bunch of people f for food. And so we're really looking forward to it. And uh, I also had a, a few people ask me if we're donating meat because we've done brisket in the past. If you would like to, please see me. Um, I'm going to be purchasing all of the pork butts here in the next uh, few days, and they're around fifteen dollars a pork butt. So if you would like to, please see myself or Hannah um, for the pork for that and uh we're gonna have a, a really great time this this saturday night at 5 p.m over the family center saturday night at five saturday at five mark that down right now 
All right, and then coming up in just a few weeks is our April, it's our birthday buddies over there across the street at SIS. Uh, so if you've never been a part of that, we go over there and we take birth, uh, birthday cake, uh, cupcakes and juice. We go over there, and if they, uh, we take them over to the school. If it's, if it's their birthday that month, they come to the cafeteria, and they go and we give them a birthday uh, for his cupcake and juice. So if you've never been, been a part of that and you'd like to, just meet us here on this, uh, April 27th at 245, and we'll head across the street and, and do birthdays, April birthday buddies. April birthdays. How many April birthdays are in here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two, 15 of you. Congratulations. Happy birthday, April birthdays. Um, could we get, get in the count and get them a cupcake too? Probably not. We don't want to start something crazy, do we? Right. Yeah, that's maybe, yeah, maybe. biting off a little bit more. We, no, can, we can wait till June for that. We can wait. <laughs> We don't do birthday buddies in June, but never mind on that. So uh, so birthday buddies coming up. It's going to be great. Also, the Women's Conference in Alito is coming up. It's called Crowned this year, and uh, the Broadway ladies are excited to be able to attend this uh, Women's Conference at Willow Park Baptist Church April the 29th, and uh, that's going to be just a great thing. Be praying towards that uh, great uh, weekend for the ladies and be praying for the men and their credit cards that weekend because I think there's a little shopping trip planned in there as well so uh, hide them if you choose or if you dare if you dare hide them okay let's have a word of prayer we will get started with our worship service this morning father we love you so much and we thank you for the day thank you for the time to spend together here in church. Lord, the spring of the year always, always reminds us of your great love for us through coming and dying on the cross, through coming and being our sin sacrifice, and through everything that you have done for us in and through the cross. But we especially are thankful for the glorious resurrection. Thankful today that we can walk in newness of life because of your wondrous resurrection from the dead. We are thankful that we continue to celebrate that today with our friends. And we look forward to what you have for us in these next few moments. Please come and and uh, just shine your light brightly here in the sanctuary this morning. We lift this service up to you and praise you ahead of time for how you will move in and through each of us. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's stand together and let's sing. We're going to do My Savior's Love, one of the great songs in the, all the hymn book uses all the right notes on the piano. Here we go. Let's sing it together. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned and clean. Oh, how marvelous, oh, how wonderful that my soul shall end. echo with a songwriter oh how i love jesus i just love this song so much and i love to sing it kind of bouncy so if you want to do like this while we're singing it that's just fine here we go there is a name i love to hear i love to sing it all. it sounds like music in my ear the sweetest name on earth oh Oh, see. 
Thank you so much for your love and uh, all that you have done for us. We know today as we participate in the offering that we are just giving back to you as you have so amazingly blessed us. So please bless the gift and the giver today and uh, let us continue to worship through our giving in Jesus name. Amen. You may be seated. Please sing with us this morning as we continue to worship our Lord, our Savior, Jesus, Messiah. He became sin who knew no sin that we might become His righteousness. He humbled Himself and carried the cross so amazing, love so amazing, Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed redeemer.
Messiah, Emmanuel, God with us. Hey, listen, what would we do without him? Let's lift it up this morning. Without him, I could do nothing. Let's sing together. Without him, I could do singing this morning thank you. you may be seated kiddos you guys come on down brother phil is coming up for children's time with phil and uh while everybody's getting ready for that let me tell you your bulletin has a couple of uh, scan codes on it the back portion of the bulletin has a small scan code in the bottom right corner if you don't mind if you're a guest with us today scan that and then it'll take you to our guest card fill that out for us and uh, then just send it to us, and that'll give us a record of your visit with us this morning because you are our friends. And also, just hold on this bulletin because all the announcements that we give and everything that uh, goes on uh, here at the church is on our church website. The front scan code goes right to bbcsweetwater.org, and that is our church website that will keep you up to date with uh, everything going on here at Broadway. So glad that you are here with us today. Brother Phil. All right. Well, it's good to see each and every one of y'all here to, uh, this morning. Now, well, there's a song that goes and it starts off, you know, talking about referring to God, but he's got the whole world in his hands. Now, I thought about singing a little the first version of that today. Uh, didn't really want to stampede exit, everybody trying to get out of the building, especially on friend day. So there we go. And uh, so we're going to go, instead of having for his God, he has the whole world in his hands. He proved that whenever he sent his son Jesus down the cross. We celebrated that last week after he died on the cross, he resurrected. So we don't have the whole world in his hands, but we do oh, have for his 
I do have fire this morning in my hands. Now, if it will go out. Now, with that, there's a lot of things we can do with fire. Sometimes it's not very good. Sometimes it is, you know, hey, if you're on a campfire and you have a fire out there, a hot dog on a stick, that makes the best hot dogs. You know, maybe you're there at the house and you got a fireplace and the fire's a cozy fire. You know, think that's nice. But you know what? When we go and we accept Jesus Christ as, as our personal Savior, we know the Holy Spirit comes in and dwells. And when He comes in and dwells in us, we, we go and uh, we have the Holy Spirit comes and dwells just like a fire. You know, one thing we need to do is, and, and this, this church has been great about it, is we, we prove it today, is by going, there's testimony after testimony, the people going and coming to know Christ, going and inviting their friends, and them coming and being part of the church and everything. And that's our, our job as a Christian. That's exactly what we're supposed to do. So if we're supposed to go and have the fire for the fire, we're supposed to go and allow, go over here, talk to a friend, and then they go, and they come here about Christ. Then we know we don't just sit, sit there on there. We need to go and go and tell that to another friend. And so when we tell that friend, then this person goes and hears about Christ. Because ultimately, that's his job as a Christian. We want, we want everybody to go and be able to hear about Christ. We want everybody to go and know the story. We have, as Christians, we have the greatest story of ever, that ever ever been told. And if we go and we keep that story to ourselves, then we know that I mean, that's wrong if we keep it to ourselves. God had created us to go and, and, and give him glory, to be able to go and share that with others. And if we're going to go and share that with others, then we can't keep it to ourselves. You know, you say, you know what, I invited friends, they didn't come. You know what, I invited several friends, you know, as well. But the fact is that we're obedient, obe or being obedient by inviting our friends. You know what, they say 80% of the people who come to church, they come because they were personally invited to church. Also, they say, they say about, it takes about nine times before somebody, after you go get to invite somebody, about nine different times on average before they go and they come to church. Some sooner, some later, but the fact is we need to make sure we're going and we're doing exactly that, inviting the friends. Get them, that's how we're going to go grow the church. That's how best we can go and have other people come and to know the Lord. All right, let's go ahead and bow our head for prayer. We'll go ahead and be dismissed and go over to uh, Kids Quest. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, again, Lord, thank you, Lord, for your love for us. Thank you so much for your blessings. Thank you for each one that is here this morning. And, the Lord, I do pray, Lord, just to have your will and your way in the this, in, in this service today. Lord, be with Pastor as he goes and preaches your word. Be as we go next door to the kids, Lord, sec, uh, for service to the Lord, everything that's been said and, and done there that be, bring you honor and glory. We just ask things most precious and holy name. Amen.
Lord, today we know that you are the only one worthy of all our praise. We know that today, not just because of what we've sung and how we've lifted you up, but as we look around us, we remember and know the great things that you have done in us and for us. And I'm praying right now, if that is not the case, or if there is some question in the hearts and minds of some who have gathered together today, that today would be a day that we would recognize you as the only one worthy of all of our praise. We're so thankful to be gathered together just like we are in the sanctuary this morning. We are so thankful that where two or three are gathered together, you are right there, or in this case, right here in the midst of us. So please make your word very plain in the middle of this crowd will you meet with us personally will you speak to us privately 
May our hearts be open to what your word has for us today. And I pray this prayer in the name that is above every name, the name that is worthy, the name Jesus. Amen. Speaking of Jesus, let's look at his words in John 14, 6 this morning. If you didn't bring a Bible, that's okay. The words will be up on the screen for you to read this morning. And we're going to go back and forth a little bit in the scriptures between John and 1 John for this message. So even with that being the case... I'm going to get a little bookmark put over here in 1 John so that we can flip back and forth quickly because the chicken is waiting. John 14, 6. Jesus saith unto him. Thomas is the one that asked the question in verse 5, but the other disciples are listening in. And because these words are in our Bibles means to us that the holy God of the universe wanted us to hear what Jesus said right here. How amazing is that? So Jesus said to Thomas and to the rest of the disciples and to us, I am the way. I am the truth, and I am the life, which is literally how that would read. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now here's what we're going to do today, okay? Because I memorized this verse a long time ago. I think this verse between last week, this week, and next week when we look at the life next week we can memorize this verse if you have not already committed it to memory and it is a vital verse for all of us to remember always so let's just read it out loud together jesus saith unto him i am the way the truth and the life no man cometh unto the father but by me let's do it again why because memorizing scripture is about being repetitive or doing it over and over and over again jesus saith unto him i am the way the truth and the life no man cometh unto the father but by me so when taking any kind of an exam you might run into some true or false questions on that exam most professors or teachers who put together quizzes of any sort like to make these true false questions a little bit tricky so you've got to read them very carefully in order to know if the answer is true or false so about a year ago we did a, uh, a course, uh, kind of an extracurricular course through a, uh, a Bible college in Louisiana on eschatology. Now eschatology is just a fancy word for the end times. And so this, this professor on video was taking us through this course and it was like a six week course with an exam at the end. Well, I love eschatology, and, and I love being a part of anything the church is doing, so I signed up. And then I realized I haven't taken a test in, like, a long time. And so the week leading up to the test, i got to be honest with you, I was on my knees a lot that week. I was praying, and I had gone through the course, and, and I knew everything pretty well, but I was 
flipping those 40 to 80 pages, whatever it was, through my, my syllabus, and I was concentrating on each and everything, and, and uh, I, I, I got a, it came around Monday to come and take the test, and my, my palms were a little sweaty. And we didn't get a practice test. We didn't get, we just kind of got this guy along the way telling us, you might want to focus on this, you know, which I appreciated that because then you put a big circle around that or highlight that or whatever just to make sure you know that really well. And lo and behold, on this hundred question quiz was some true false questions. And one of the things that he highlighted was a memory verse within this this uh, whole Bible study slash class, college class, and he said, you might want to memorize this verse. So I, I'm pretty smart, sometimes. And I thought, that probably means that's going to be on the test. Some way, some shape, some form. And where did it show up? but the true or false questions. And so, in the true or false questions, I'm reading this verse, and I'm going, that's not exactly the way I memorized that. Is this tricky or what? And so, true or false, does the Bible say, and wrote out the verse, and I'm going, that's not the way I memorized it. Those are not the exact words. And so, I very, well, first of all, I got my lucky coin out of my pocket and flipped it one time. Heads is true. Y'all ever tried that? Is that, is that very successful either? 50-50, right? But I went, very hesitantly false. And... I was so thankful. Listen, the pressure of what if I, as the pastor, flunk this test? <laughs> I mean, are we going to keep that a secret? Or, since Holly and Phil were kind of putting the class on, are they going to put that in the bulletin next Sunday? <laughs> but thankfully, the Test results came in weeks later, by the way. Boy, was I ever nervous for those weeks. And whew, I passed. Passed and actually uh, did very well. But man, those true-false questions can be quite tricky. And rather than flipping a coin, it's always best to know what is really true and what is really false. So Jesus says right here, I am the truth. I am the truth. So John begins his gospel in, in chapter 1 by not calling Jesus, Jesus. He says, in the beginning was the Word, with a capital W. Meaning that this is Jesus we're talking about. And... Chapter 1, verse 1 says, The Word, capital W, was made flesh and dwelt among us. Which means Jesus, the truth, everything he said was the Word. And what do we know about the Word? That the Word of God is true. Okay? So Jesus being the truth and Jesus being the Word made flesh that dwelt among us, he is telling us the truth. Jesus says then, I am the truth, and no man, that is, none of us, you or me, can get to the Father except through Him. And we must know this morning that is true. And we circle true to that. We do know this is a very pointed statement. And we also know that it could only be made by Jesus. Because 
Have you ever lied? Have you ever, how about this? You, maybe we don't like the word lie anymore. Have you ever not told the truth? Come on, am I the only one? We've, we've all probably not told the truth at one point or another, maybe even as recent as this morning, when we lied to ourselves about, that's not really what the scale says. You know? Or, I'm going to move that scale on the carpet. If you know anything about scales, it's a nice little trick. But listen to this. You know, Jesus could be the only one who says this because John, who also wrote 1 John, flip over to chapter 3, verse 5, or it'll pop up on the screen, 1 John 3, 5. John wrote this about Jesus. And ye know that he, Jesus, was manifested, that is, shown to us, to take away our sins. And in him, Jesus, is no sin. Now that's amazing, isn't it? Because you and I just readily admitted that we've lied before. Do you know what a lie is? It's a sin. Thou shalt not bear false witness. It's one of the big ten don't lie is what that means but each and every one of us have except john says jesus therefore he can accurately say in john 14 6 that i am the truth so the fact that jesus never had a sin in him means everything he ever said is completely true this, of course, gives him the right to say, I am the truth. So, now that we know who is the truth, let's just ask a few questions. And then we're going to have a hallelujah time of baptism before we eat the fatted chicken. You ask a few questions. Go back to John and find chapter 18 with me. John 18, find verse 28. We're going to read a few verses of Scripture here, just so you get the full setting. As we ask the question, what is truth? What is truth? Truth by definition, is that which is in accordance with fact or reality. We say it again. Truth, by definition, is that which is in accordance with fact or reality. So if I told you that the earth is round and not flat, that would be true based on the facts that we have learned about our planet. True? Even though, if you have ever been to Terlingua, Texas, you feel like you are about to whoop, fall off the edge of the earth with Wile E. Coyote, and there just be a little poof down there, and it's all over. If I told you then that the earth is round and not flat, that would be a true statement. So the opposite of truth would be a guess, or someone's own form of reality, possibly known as their opinion. So let me tell you this about opinions. They're like our armpits. We all have a couple, and they all stink. <laughs> that is the reason why I really do try to not preach my opinion a whole lot. And I always, always try to, if I am sharing an opinion, to preface the statement with, this is my opinion. And try not to do that very often. Why? Because I don't want to stray far from the truth. Okay? Therefore, you're not hearing my opinion. You're hearing what the Bible has to say. Not my own guess about something 
or someone my own form of reality. So here in John chapter 18, Pilate, this is the guy who ultimately gave the okay for Jesus to be crucified. We're not talking about the pilot of a plane. We're talking about Pilate, a man. Like many of us, have difficulty deciphering the truth. So this begins in John 18, 28. We read a few verses together. Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment. Caiaphas was the high priest. Into the hall of judgment. And it was early in the morning, and they themselves went not into the judgment hall, those religious leaders, lest they should be defiled but that they might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? They answered and said unto him, If he were not a male factor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee, a criminal. Then Pilate said to them, Take ye him and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said to him, is it not lawful for us to put away or to put any man to death that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled which he spake signifying what death he should die so the Jews are like hey in our law we can't put people to death but you're the Roman leader of this area you can you can say it's okay to kill him which is just fulfilling the prophecy that Jesus has been telling everyone for months now verse 33 then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said to him art thou the king of the Jews Jesus answered him says sayest thou this of thyself or did someone or did others tell it thee of me somebody else tell you this Pilate answered am I a Jew Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What have you done? He's like, am I a Jew? Do I, do I get everything that you Jews do with regards to the law? And now they're wanting to kill you, but they can't kill you because it's against their law, but they really hate you real bad? You see, Pilate's in a little bit of a rock and a hard place, right? Rock and a hard place, right? Jesus then answered in verse 36, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence, from here. Pilate therefore said to him, Art thou a king? Tell me what you are. Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto what? The truth. Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice, is open to my truth, is open to the reality that Jesus saith unto him, I am the truth. And no man comes unto the Father except by me. So verse 38. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? When he had said this, he went out again to the Jews, saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. But you have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will you therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber, and of course they let him escape and crucified Jesus in chapter 19. What is truth? What is truth? See, don't you kind of sit around sometimes and wonder, what is really true? 
In our world today, do you have a hard time deciphering who's telling the truth and who's lying? And haven't liars got really good? And, believe it or not, liars look just like you and me. Again, believe it or not, we actually could be lying to ourselves today if we're not careful. Why? Because we, like Pilate, ask the question, what is truth? What is truth? The irony in all of this, this conversation between Pilate and Jesus, is Jesus, the truth, was standing right in front of him. That's the irony. Jesus, the truth, standing right in front of him. And we know that obviously he didn't care anything about the Jewish customs and wasn't going to try to figure that one out. So he is basically saying, I don't want to have anything to do with this. And you, in my mind, Pilate says, are wrapped up in all of this. And because of all of this over here, I don't even know what the truth is. Do we feel sometimes like we're all wrapped up in this over here and don't even know what the truth is anymore? Do you feel like that's the way the world has taken us? To the point where we just shrug and go, what is truth? So rather than hearing Jesus and finding out about or more about the truth, he just shrugged. I feel like many of us, many times a day, just shrug. Do you catch yourself doing that? I do. When the things in this world just don't make any sense at all, and it seems like the world is just more and more chaotic and full of lies and selfishness, and just people wanting to steal all of our happiness away. I just shrug. Unfortunately then for many today, that's all we're doing. Here's the fact or the truth though. All of us are sinners and we deserve condemnation. Here's another truth though. God is full of grace and mercy and wants us to be saved from that condemnation that our sin brings. So the reality is this, by choosing not to know and believe the truth, we are condemning ourselves and turning our back on God's gift to us. How many of you in here can quote John 3.16? How many of you in here can quote John 3.17 and 18? I didn't think so. Let's go back and look at it then. All right, because you can quote with me John chapter 3, verse 16, which says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's great, right? Well, verse 17, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's pretty great, right? But here's the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey would have once said. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But, here's the truth, he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. The truth. He has not believed in the truth. I am the truth. And no man cometh unto the Father except by me, the truth. So another reality is this. We are shrugging our shoulders at what God has done for us in Jesus. And then preserve for us in the Bible that gives us these facts. This 
truth. So what is truth? What is the way through all of the chaos of the world and all the many voices? The way is the truth. And remember, Jesus said, I am the way and I am the truth. The way to get through this chaotic world is by knowing the truth. Okay? And so many of us have continually asked the question, what in the world is truth? And the Bible clears that up for us right here. Many of us are aimlessly wandering around our world today searching for the fulfillment that only a relationship, a restored relationship with our Creator can fill. So the shrug of Pilate is the same shrug we share today if we are resisting the truth. And we're just saying, what is it? I just shared it with you. So, we have to ask this question. What will the truth do for me? What will the truth do for me? We're still in John. Let's go to chapter 8. John chapter 8, find verse 31. What will the truth or truth do for me? John 8, 31, then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. So he's talking to believing Jews here, and he says, If ye continue in my word, what is his word? The truth. Then ye are my disciples indeed. Many of us, let's just be honest, okay? Many of us have gotten kind of mixed up in the world, even though we're still believers. Many of us have kind of dipped our toesies out there in some uncharted waters, and it hadn't worked out too well. So that's why Jesus says, if you're going to really be my disciple, you're going to continue in the truth. You're going to continue learning more about me. You're going to continue to have the truth as the cornerstone of your life. Not the world's ways, means, and philosophies, but the Bible. The word. Verse 32. If you do this, you shall know the truth, and the truth will do what? It will set you or make you free. Isn't that great? So what will the truth do for me? It will set me free. Verse 36. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. So Jesus, the truth, is here to provide answers for this life. In his own words, he, the truth, sets us free. That means we can know freedom from our sin through our belief in him as our Savior. But it also means that the search for our reality is fulfilled. We don't have to try to find some sort of a reality outside of Jesus. He is all we need. He helps us figure out why we are alive, what we are supposed to be doing while we are taking up His oxygen, and how we are supposed to live the years that we get to live on planet earth so let's get something straight today if anyone ever asks you who or what is the truth the only answer is jesus again going back to first john 3 5 in him is no sin so since jesus is the truth we must know that everything he ever said is completely true so here in John chapter 8, what does he say about our enemy, the devil? John 8, 44 says, as he's talking to the religious Jewish leaders who did not believe in him, ye are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. He abode not in the truth. 
he abode not in the truth. Because there is how much truth found in him? None. When he speaks a lie, he speaks of his own. For he is a liar and what? The father of lies. So that makes Jesus true and the devil false. How often? Always. 100% of the time. So what does it mean when we deny the truth? Well, let's go back over to 1 John. Man, John got this, this idea down when Jesus was talking about himself being the truth and everything because he wrote 1 John with one of the main themes being the truth. 1 John chapter 2 this time, verse 21. What does it mean when and if we deny the truth? 1 John 2, 21. I have not written unto you because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He that denies Jesus as being the truth. He that is denying is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. So very simply put, what does it mean when we deny the truth? It means it makes us Antichrist. Anti-truth. It means that we have swallowed the lies of the devil. So then we ask the final question. How important is the truth then? If you are taking a test, the truth or the correct answer is vital to a good grade, correct? It's imperative. The correct or true answer for eternal life in heaven is through the truth, Jesus. And as he says, no man comes to the Father except by me. So, take a pop quiz you ready <clears throat> you ready okay about to get a pen no I'm just kidding true or false Jesus is the absolute truth and there is nothing false in him or in anything he ever said or anything he ever did true or false you sure I need to get out the lucky quarter. Okay, we're true. All right, good. True or false? <clears throat> there is a shred of truth in the devil, so we better listen to what he says. You're sure? Last one. True or false? Since Jesus is the truth, he is the only way to get to heaven to be with our Creator, God, forever. You sure? Well, I'm happy to say you passed. In fact, 100%. But now that we have this head knowledge, it is vital that we have this as heart knowledge as well. You hear what I'm saying? You can't just know it up here. The Bible says you've got to believe it right here. I heard it said one time by an evangelist that many people will miss heaven by six inches. The distance between the head and the heart some of us, that's about 12 inches, depending on how big your head is. Don't be that person that knows it up here. 
Hey, you know all the right answers. You just made 100 on a quiz in church today. But you never believed it in your heart? The Bible says that we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and we believe in our hearts that God raised Him from the dead in order to be saved in Romans 10, 9. So I hope and pray that if you need to be set free today, you remember the truth sets us free, that you will come to the truth. I'm just asking you today, friends, come to Jesus. I'm asking you, friends, if you have strayed away from Jesus, but you know that you know that you're saved, that you've just kind of been out in the world kind of buying other philosophies and trying to mix it all together, I'm asking you today, come back to Jesus. Quit trying to fuss with all that and figure all that out. Hey, we can't figure out the world because the devil, man, he's always changing. But Jesus said, I don't ever change. I'm always going to be the truth. And the truth is always going to set you free. So quit trying to figure it out and just come back to the truth. We're going to have what we call a time of invitation or a time of commitment. I'm going to ask you right now to bow your heads, close your eyes. Let's stand together. Pianist is getting ready with singer this morning to uh, sing a verse or two of invitation. If by chance the Lord has spoken to you in some way and you you need to either come to him or come back to him, I would love to talk to you, and there are those near that would love to pray with you this morning about your need to get to the truth. Father, thank you so much for being so clear in your word, and I thank you today for loving us so much that you don't want us to be confused or in the dark. You want us to know you. You want us to know your truth. You want us to be set free. Please take this time of invitation, and if you need to free someone from their sins so that they are saved, please, please do that. If others here today have been kind of wandering away from the truth, please draw us back. Get all the confusion and chaos put aside. Please let this time of invitation be a time of victory. As Holy Spirit, you speak to each and every one of us, privately and personally. In Jesus' name, amen. As we begin to sing this morning, the Lord leads you. You just come. I'm standing right here. You just come and tell me what your need is, and we're going to get it taken care of today. The cross upon which Jesus died. sheltering which we can hide and his grace will be sufficient for me and deep is its fountain as wide as the sea the 
tell you what, will you be seated for just a moment, but y'all continue to sing that song, please, and I'll go get ready for baptism this morning. chilly waters of Jordan today, these waters are warm, like really warm, you need a hot bath after church, no I'm just kidding, man I'm telling you what a glorious day it is and uh, uh, so thankful today that Norman and Lindsay Tuchman have come to know the Lord as Savior and uh, what, a, what an amazing thing that has been for our church and to uh, pray for them and Especially, I just have to say that James and Mary um, and their friendship with them and their uh, consistent Christian witness around them and others. And I know you got friends here with you today to, to witness this. So, uh, but you got a lot of people on your side, and, uh, and we have grown to love you guys so so very much. So it is a privilege to be able to baptize.
created in the likeness of his death. Praise the wall. The newness of the Thanks for hanging around. Appreciate that. Anybody hungry? All right. I Hey, listen, I heard somebody's dinner bell go off at 12 noon sharp. I checked my iPad when that went off, and it was right at noon. 
By the way, in case, in case y'all are always concerned about this, I always know what time it is. <laughs> it's just sometimes I just don't really care. So, uh, but, I, but I just, I want you to know that I do know what time it is. So, uh, um, <clears throat> but man, I tell you what, a hallelujah day it has been. And uh, what a joy. You know, friend day um, is, is much more to us than just a day we try to have a big old crowd. It's a day that, uh, that like last year, you know, you know, Norman and Lindsay were guests of the Smiths last year on Friend Day. Did y'all know that? Did y'all remember that? It's okay if you didn't. But just because they were here, seeds were planted, things got, wa- I mean, and now, guess who gets the glory and the praise for the increase? Our Lord Jesus has done a great work. Y'all don't have to stand still. <laughs> but I am going to get you to, uh, I am going to get you to stand up here with me. James, Mary, y'all come on up. And your friends, would y'all, do y'all mind coming up with them? You can introduce us to your friends. Who are they? It's uh, Rob and Jennifer and Lizzie and Emily and Henry. Man, I am so glad you guys are here today. They came specifically to see them get baptized and to prove that Norman has a friend. Come on over here. Besides James, besides James yes, besides James. Y'all scoot on into the middle there. Yes, yes, yes. And so this is going to work out swimmingly today. Been wanting to use that all day. <clears throat> um, so I want you to come by today and just tell them how much you are thankful for what God has done for them in their lives. Tell our guests welcome. And uh, then you can slip right out this door and walk around the maze to the family center, which is where lunch is ready. Okay? And uh, so what I'd like you to, for you to do is when you go in, just grab a, grab a cup of sweet tea, unsweet tea, or water, or if you choose, well, I'll have the coffee made here pretty soon. But, uh, but anyway, the coffee will be ready for dessert. And go ahead and grab that and have a seat. And then rather than wrap the gym around with a long line, I'll call you out and we'll go eat. Uh, We'll kind of go eat in order, okay? But for sure, if you brought friends today, you and your friends get to eat first. So, So we'll make sure and do that. All right? Let's have a great time of fellowship. Friend day. We have ham. We have chicken. We have chicken tenders. Does that count as chicken? It does? Are we sure that's really chicken? It doesn't have a bone in it. How do you know? Well, anyway, um, but uh, it's all going to be ready for you. Please stay. Please be our guests. And please remember, no church tonight. We will be resting up from a busy day. So let's stand together this morning and let's be dismissed. What are we doing? Without him? Jesus, Jesus? Let's sing that chorus. Here we go. Jesus. Come on down. Oh, Jesus. Do you know?